Well, good morning, uh, everyone, whether you're joining us uh, in person, whether you're joining us virtually, or whether you are joining us over the phone. It's good to have you with us this morning. We are happy that you are here uh, with us. We have a couple of announcements this morning that I want to make sure that everyone is aware of. Uh, The first is that we have two important meetings this week. Uh, The first is is that we will have an SPRC meeting on Tuesday night uh, at 7 p.m. And the second is that we will have a council meeting uh, on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Both these meetings, uh, I will be sending out reminders uh, tomorrow uh, to the individuals that serve on those committees with the phone number to call in uh, to be able to attend those meetings. The next announcement is that uh, Sharon is enjoying a much deserved vacation, uh, but no need to worry. We have coverage Monday through Friday here at the office. Uh, Pastor Barbara and I will be covering the office. Uh, I will be in on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from nine to two, and Pastor Barbara will be in on Tuesday from nine to two. On Tuesday, we will have our food pantry from 5 to 6 o'clock in the evening. And then on Wednesday, we will have our book study from uh, 1 to 2 o'clock. So we invite you to join us for that. We also will have a Christian education meeting to discuss uh, what Sunday school will look like for the fall here uh, at 1130 today. And we will have our virtual fellowship time after church today, uh, right after service. Whew, I think that's all the announcements. That's probably the most we've had in quite a while. So I think that takes care of all of the announcements. I will have one more announcement, uh, but I know that people uh, hop on late, so I'm going to wait to do that until after our prayer time about uh, church reopening for everyone. Uh, So uh, stay tuned for that uh, for after the prayer time. All right, with that, uh, with the announcements uh, being said, let us bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. Risen Christ, our hearts are made glad by your love for us and for all your creation. As we gather in your name, kindle in us a desire to follow more fully in the way that leads to truth and life. For we ask it in your blessed name. Amen. This time we'll invite you to rise, or never, we're not asking you to rise, we're asking you to remain seated. I, I apologize. We're going to ask you to remain seated if you are here in worship with us. If you are home, we invite you to sing with us our opening hymn number 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. <laughs>
please join in our call to worship. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like a summer rain which restores the parched earth. It is like a cool breeze at the shore of a lake, at the top of a mountain, or through a crowded city street. God meets us here. We have gathered to worship the maker of our days, the restorer of our souls, and the breath of our lives. Well, for our uh, children's chat this morning, I have something with me. I have, uh, I don't know if you can, I'm going to hold it up close to the camera here. Um, I'm going to let uh, the children decide uh, if they know what it is. And if they know what it is, I'll let you tell your parents uh, at home. Maybe some of the adults don't even know what this is. So I'll give you a minute to try to figure out what it is. While you're trying to figure out what it is, I'm going to introduce uh, who is a part of worship this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Josh. I am the senior pastor here. Uh, the beautiful uh, voice and who is leading us in the call to worship in the unison prayer is our associate pastor, Pastor Barbara, and uh, the individual who's doing a great job on the piano uh, before service and on the organ is our music director, Allah, and so we're glad that you're here with us this morning. The image that I put up is a shepherd's staff, and I'll talk about it during the sermon today as we look at the 23rd Psalm, and the shepherd's staff is a unique item for a shepherd. Uh, the rod part of it was so that way the shepherd could fight off any animals that they needed to fight off, and the hook part was to be able to help the sheep for any time that they slip and f slipped and fall or any time that uh, they needed help being able to get up because, well, sheep aren't, as I'll talk about in the sermon, they aren't really smart animals. They aren't at the top of the animal kingdom in terms of intelligence. And so they would fall over and then they couldn't get back up. And so they would need the shepherd's help. And so in life, we also need God's help and God's guidance. And so that's what I'm going to talk with the adults about today is that in life, when we are going through valleys or we are going through wilderness, we need God's help, but God is the good shepherd. And so that's what I'll talk with the adults about today. All right. At this time, we will uh, sing our hymn of illumination, number 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
This time we're going to uh, enter our prayer time here at the United Methodist Church at Milltown. We have a couple of things to be thankful for. The first thing that I want to give thanks for is our team that put v Vacation Bible School together in the midst of a virtual world. Uh, it was a challenge, uh, to say the least, but we wanted to make sure that we provided something for uh, children from our church, but also children from our community. And so uh, I want to make sure I give a shout out to all of our volunteers who helped do that, the teachers who helped come in and teach some lessons. And in particular, I want to give a shout out to Emily, who kind of helped uh, give us some direction, uh, some guidance. And so thank you uh, to Emily. Uh, so for our VBS volunteers and for uh, Emily, uh, thanks be to God. Amen. We can be thankful for those who are serving on our front lines, uh, again, in the midst of this pandemic. It's not easy, and they continue to show sacrifice, and for that we can be thankful. Thanks be to God. Amen. This week, uh, a lot of people in our church have experienced loss. It has been a difficult week for people that are a part of our church, and so we need to be in prayer for Bill's family, Naomi's family, uh, and be in prayer for Wendy's family. Wendy is the daughter of uh, Joan from the Ice Cream Depot. Uh, many of us have uh, been treated to ice cream there, uh, and uh, Joan has been very good to many of our families. Uh, many people may not know that Joan has been joining us for church um, for a, a little bit now. Uh, and so what I would like to do is I would like to be a place where we collect cards for Joan and make sure that uh, it's difficult losing anyone, but to lose a child uh, is extremely difficult. And so what I would like to do is if you would like to put a, if you would like to offer up a card of sympathy for Joan, uh, please uh, send it to the church, and I will make sure that Joan gets it as we surround Joan in this time of need for her and for Wendy's family. Let's be in prayer for Ethel as well. Let's be in prayer for those who are on the front lines. Let's be in prayer for all those who are waiting for answers. Let's be in prayers for all those who have other health concerns as well. And let's be in prayers for parents who are making difficult decisions and for those in leadership positions who are making difficult decisions. For all of these things, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. With that, let us bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God, as we come before you this morning, we come before you as a humbled people, a humbled and thankful people. God, I am so grateful for the volunteers here at this church that over the last five weeks have shown just how much they can adapt in the midst of a pandemic to be able to offer Vacation Bible School for not only children here in our church, but children in our community. God, we're so thankful for those who continue to live on the front lines, show what sacrifice and service look like as we think of those who are out driving trucks or are making deliveries, those who are working in our essential stores, our funeral home directors, those working in the hospitals, our police officers, our firefighters, our EMS individuals. God, we are so thankful for all of them. We pray over them and for their families. God, this is a week where people need to feel your comfort and your presence. We think of Bill 
and Naomi and Wendy's families. God, we think of all those who are battling the difficulty of loss because no matter how recent or long ago, grief is a wave that continues to crash upon us. But God, you are a lighthouse that can shine bright in the midst of darkness and the waves that come. God, we lift up Ethel to you. God, we pray for those who are having health concerns. We think of those who are waiting for answers in whatever capacity they might be. We pray that they would feel your presence as well. God, we lift up all of the requests that were sent in, those that were mentioned today, those that were emailed in, those that were talked to myself or Pastor Barbara about, those that were talked about, engaged in conversation, whether they be over the phone or a socially distanced visit or over a meal. We lift them all up to you and those that are still on our hearts this very morning because you are a God that is ever more ready to listen than we are to speak. As we take time now to pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I had uh, explained that um, I I would have uh, another announcement later on before we uh, read the scripture. And so, for those who are attending, I'm going to talk more at the camera because, well, you're already here. So I'm going to talk at the camera, and for those on the phone, you can uh, listen in. The council voted this week to open up church to all who would like to attend, uh, and that will start next Sunday. So uh, if you are at home watching and you would like to attend, uh, please, by all means, come next week. I want to make sure that it's clear that this is only for Sunday. Uh, We are still not opening uh, for Saturday yet, and the guidelines will be sent out again. Um, Everything will still be set in place where uh, masks will be required, um, and the parking lot door is still the door that is there. Uh, Paul will be there to greet you with a smile under his mask and to take your temperature. Um, and you will still be seated in a place where uh, the usher will seat you, uh, so you will more than likely not get your usual seat, depending upon how far back you want to sit and how early you get here. There will be a 15-minute window for you to sit, and um, depending upon how close you are to front is how early uh, you'll be leaving um, at the end of service. There will not be fellowship time afterwards still, and um, we are going to be meeting later today about what Sunday school will look like and when that will start. So um, next week and until at least September, uh, we will not have Sunday school, uh, and we will not have nursery until at least September uh, and through Labor Day weekend. So I just want to make sure that everybody watching at home knows, so if that's kind of like a deal breaker for you, then I would recommend staying home because if you're anticipating Sunday school when you get here, there's no Sunday school still. But we want to make sure that if you would like to attend church, you are more than welcome to be able to come to church and you will be greeted with smiling faces under masks or maybe somebody will have a mask with a smiling face. People have asked if a face shield is okay. That is perfectly fine. The only thing we are asking is that you have something Uh, covering uh, your face for the time that you are here. If it's easier for you to breathe with a face shield, then by all means, please have your face shield. Just make sure that your temperature can be taken when you get here. You just need to have a face covering. But we will look forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday if you would like to attend in person. 
The other question that people have asked is, does this mean that you are stopping the live streams and the call-ins? No, we still will have the live stream going. We still will have the call-ins going both Saturday night and Sunday. That will not be changing and it probably won't be changing even when we open with Sunday school and everything. We will still have everything going because a lot of people have expressed that they live far away and they really wanna make sure that they can still watch us. So we will have live streaming still going for all time, I guess. So <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's our announcement. We're happy that uh, many of you uh, are enjoying us and uh, that's, that's good news. So with that, let's uh, center ourselves and prepare to hear the scripture, a scripture that so many of us know. I will be reading the Common English uh, Bible version that so many people enjoyed when I did my five minutes with God um, uh, about two weeks ago. So I will read that version again for us. This is what the scripture says. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me in the right, right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time I'll invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me as we say a prayer before we hear the message. God is... We prepare to look at this song by Chris Stapleton, and we prepare to reflect on the 23rd Psalm, a psalm that so many of us started learning in Sunday school. May we be a people of open minds and open hearts. May we be a people that are willing to understand that you are a guide, a guide that directs us through troubled times, the valley times, the dark times that you are indeed the great shepherd. Be with the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth. Amen. Well, this morning we get to the final of the country artists that we will cover this summer. And for anybody who knows me, that breaks my heart as I love country music. As we get to Chris Stapleton, and his song, Broken Halos. Believe it or not, I am not actually the one who picked this song. Pastor Matt from St. Paul's picked this song, and uh, I'm glad he did as we're able to uh, pair it up with the 23rd Psalm, a psalm that so many of us know so well, but it's actually not preached on all that often, I think because it's often shared at, well, funerals, kind of a downer time that this passage is read, but it actually offers so much hope. But as we begin today, I want you to think about a time that you are in a wilderness time of your life. And what I mean by that is a time when you are wandering, a time when you are searching, a time when you are having difficulty finding your way. Because what this song is about and what the 23rd Psalm is actually about is about guidance and direction during dark times and a time of wandering. For me, it's about the path to becoming your senior pastor here at the United Methodist Church at Milltown. Think about all you had to do in your life in order to get to where you are. Sometimes it's a matter of wandering and finding your way. For some of you, it's a little bit longer than others, but for me, I had to go through that process of trying to decide what college to go to, and I decided on Lancaster Bible College. I originally went to college as an elementary education major, because as a senior pastor, that makes total sense. But I went to LBC because they had a great elementary education program. That's why I actually chose LBC, even though they have a great pastoral ministry program. 
But I switched to youth ministry because that was my Jonah time, where I decided I was going to run from my call in being a senior pastor or a pastor to adults. And then after doing youth ministry for a while, and God blessed that ministry very, very much, I finally decided that I could not run from this call anymore, and then I decided it was time to go to seminary, because that's what you do when you're going to be a pastor. So I looked at a couple of different seminaries, and I decided on Evangelical Seminary, and I decided that I would get my Master's of Divinity in Marriage and Family Therapy. And that doesn't even include the whole wandering process of what denomination, if I'm going to do a denomination, what I'm going to, where I'm going to be a pastor at. And then there's the path in the Methodist Church of, well, getting licensed, then a provisional elder, which is what I am right now, and then hopefully ordination, which comes soon. For me, hopefully, fingers crossed. It's this wandering process. It feels like a wilderness. It feels like the Israelites where you're just wandering around for a while. But when you finally get there, when you get to the promised land, you can look back and understand that you have a good guide, you have a good shepherd that is in front of you. Well, that's what this song and this psalm are about, that even in the midst of our wilderness times, and our times of in a valley, even if it's a dark time, that we have a good guide and we have a good shepherd. So let's look at this Chris Stapleton song, Broken Halos. I've broken it down into three parts, and this is the first part. Seen my share of broken halos, folded wings that used to fly. They've all gone wherever they go, broken halos that used to, fly, used to shine. As we will look at in our psalm today, there are dark times in life. There are times that will be difficult. There are times where it feels like both sides are closing in and we don't have any direction that we can go in. But the good news is, is that we will have a guide as we will find out. It feels like our halo has been broken and our wings don't fly anymore, but we have a guide that can direct us. The second part. Angels come down from the heavens just to help us on our way, come to teach us, then they leave us, and they find some other soul to save. So as our scripture will show us today, there's really two things that God gives us along the way. God's goodness and a Hebrew word, which is my second favorite Hebrew word, hesed, which is God's covenantal love that goes with us in the journey. So we have angels that walk with us in these two uh, God characteristics that follow us in life that help us along our way. The third part, don't go looking for the reasons, don't go asking Jesus why. We're not meant to know the answers. They belong to the by and by. They belong to the by and by. Even in times when it doesn't feel like our prayers are being heard or answered, the good news is, is that God is there with us. I use that terminology when it feels like our prayers aren't being answered because I am a firm believer, and I've said it numerous times, that God does answer prayer. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no, and sometimes the answer is just wait. We don't like those last two, but sometimes those are indeed the answers. As we'll see in this psalm, again, David talks about numerous times in there, the guide or the shepherd goes with us throughout. So let's look at this psalm, Psalm 23. And again, it's an extremely well-known psalm, except, in fact, many of us can probably recite it by heart or a good portion of it. And for many of us, we know that before David became king, David was, in fact, a shepherd. So this isn't one of those things that someone is writing about the qualities of someone without knowing their occupation. David knows what a shepherd is like, and so it's important for us to remember that. So let's look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. One of the reasons why people find so much comfort in this psalm is because as David writes this, David doesn't write it as the Lord is the shepherd, so people don't lack anything. David writes this and says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. The personalization is already there for us. 
I talk often about at Christmas time that shepherds aren't exactly held in high regard, so why would David talk about God as a shepherd? Well, while shepherds weren't necessarily held in high regard, their qualities were very much held in high regard. In fact, their qualities are held in such high regard that it wasn't uncommon for kings in the ancient Near East even to be referred to with qualities as shepherds. Think about it. Shepherds are protecting. Shepherds provide. They're qualities that you would want from any king or any leader. They're qualities you would want in any person you are following. The second part of that verse is, I lack nothing. And this is where I really like my translation, and this translation is accurate, especially for us here in America. We often say, I shall not want. That's the version that we often learn. But here in America, we want all the time, don't we? In fact, we have a hard time deciding how much we want. I've talked about it in this series that we have gone through a purging process here in 2020 because we had time on our hands, so it was time to get rid of things because we wanted things at one point, and now we want to get rid of things that we wanted. But for so many of us who are hearing this or are watching this, we really don't lack anything. In fact, for many of us who are watching this or are hearing this, we're going to decide later on where we're going to go out to eat because we lack nothing. We trust in the Good Shepherd. Verse 2, He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. The idea of grassy meadows or green pastures is the idea that God's provisions are constant. It's not a dry season where God's provisions go away for a season like shepherds would have to move their flocks, but God's provisions are constant. Philip Keller is a shepherd who wrote reflections on the 23rd Psalm based off of his uh, experience as a shepherd. And he talked about the fact that sheep will only lie down or really rest when they have three things that are taken care of. They have their food taken care of, they have a water supply taken care of, and their fear or anxiety of predators are taken care of. Only then will they rest. And so what David is saying here from his experience as a shepherd is that God will take care of you. In fact, David talks about it again. Have no fear is what David says. Verse 3, he keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. One of the primary roles of a shepherd is to be a guide. Because as I talked about in the children's chat, sheep are, well, not smart. And they're also, well, very stubborn. They like to do their own thing. And oftentimes, if we reflect in our relationship with God, well, we can tend to be the same way. We look and find ourselves in a terrible situation, and oftentimes we've made a decision or found ourselves making, well, not smart decisions, being stubborn, and doing our own thing. But the good news is, is that in order for the shepherd to be the guide, the shepherd doesn't take the sheep somewhere and just leave them there and say, good luck, sheep. The shepherd stays with the sheep and guides them back and stays with them. Verse 4, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. Darkest valley is the closest translation here, but we say um, shadow, shadow of the valley of death. Either way you translate it, it's not a good time that you're looking at. But the idea of the valley is that you are surrounded on both sides. And you have to try to navigate through both sides. There are valleys in life. There are difficulties in life. But the idea is, is if you follow the great shepherd, if you follow God, you will navigate through it. It's not the great shepherd will drop you off in the midst of the valley and let you go. No, you are guided through it. There's one other part I want to point out here, and I'll read it again. I fear no danger 
because you are with me. It doesn't say because the good shepherd is with you that there is no danger or there is no evil. What it says is that you should fear no danger or no evil because the great shepherd is with you. Once again, it's not this reminder that when you are in this relationship with God that everything turns great and good. It's this reminder that when those things come up, you are not alone. Verse 5. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. By setting a table uh, in front of enemies, God is establishing whose side God is on. And the good news is, is that that is your side. And that goes back to something that takes place in Bible times that they would do in the midst of battle and different things. But the other part that's in here is the imagery of a cup overflowing. And this is something you can even do at home if you want, if you're looking for something to do with your children to go back to the 23rd Psalm. When a cup is so full, it overflows. And that's what God does for God's children with abundance. If we take note and we look each day, God's abundance overflows with mercy and love each and every single day. And that's something that is apparent to each and every single one of us. God's hesed, God's faithful love, and God's goodness, which lead into the next verse. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. I talked about this idea of hesed, that it is my second favorite Hebrew word. It's this covenantal love that God has with God's people. It's this love that doesn't abandon. It's this love that is always there. And this is a promise that God makes to God's people. And this is a love that follows us, along with God's goodness. And it's something that, as Chris Stapleton puts it, angels that go with us to help guide us. I want to close with a story uh, about Elizabeth Elliot, and she tells a story about how uh, travelers would come, and when they would come, they would stop and ask her for advice. And when she noticed when these travelers would come and they would stop and they would ask her for advice, they would have these heavy backpacks. And inside of these heavy backpacks, there would be all of this, well, useless stuff because they really hadn't done their research. They had brought items that, well, they wanted to bring for their journey. And when they were interacting with Elizabeth, they weren't asking the right questions. They weren't trying to find out about the native people or the native land. They just wanted to know a couple of phrases that they wanted to know. And she wanted to try to help them understand that with the area that they were going into, that they were woefully underprepared, they were carrying way too much, the journey was going to be so much harder than it needed to be. And well, they just weren't going to be able to interact with the people that they needed to interact with, and the people weren't going to understand them. And she would often smile to herself, and she talks about it, the fact that this reminded her of our relationship with God. That oftentimes God tries to be the guide in our relationship with God in this thing called life. But what we do is we carry around backpacks with us. And what we put in there is things like worry and guilt and all of these things that we don't actually need in life. And we make life so much more difficult because we think we know the way When in all reality, the guide is going right there in front of us, but we aren't looking up. Friends, I tend to think that Elizabeth is right, especially when reflecting here on the 23rd Psalm. The good news is, is that we have this great shepherd that goes before us, a great shepherd that knows the way. And as our theologian Chris Stapleton puts it this week, there's angels that go before us each and every single day in God's goodness and hesed, God's faithful love. Friends, you're going to enter the wilderness. You're going to enter the valley. You're going to enter the dark times. But the good news is, is that the guide is guiding you through. They aren't permanent, and you'll get through them. May we be a people that look to the great shepherd this week. Amen.
Friends, at this time, we're going to get ready to sing our closing hymn, number 673, God Be With You Till We Meet Again. invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for our closing prayer. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of dreams has brought us together. The God of dreams sends us forth to love one another well. The God of love has knit us together in unity. The God of love sends us forth to heal all of our divisions. The God of hope sends us forth together. The God of peace sends us forth to bring the world home. Amen.